afternoon, one and all present here. My name is Anjali Murthy. I am head girl of Indus International School, Pune, and I'll, I have the honor of presenting our esteemed panelist speakers for today. Um, Mahatma Gandhi had once said that the future depends on what you do today. And so taking a leaf out of his thoughts, the topic of today's session is nurturing the child to take up innovation and start young, inculcating the belief that each one can be part of the mission for a better tomorrow. With this, I would like to introduce the panel of the session on innovation at schools. Our first panelist speaker will be Mr. Rikrit Serai, the managing director of Satluj Group of Schools. Next, we have Dr. S.K. Rathor, the founder, chairman, and managing director of Sanford Group of Schools. We have Ms. Aditi Guradia, managing director of Bilimoria High School. Mr. Chandrasekhar, who will be our moderator for this session, the CEO of Jain Group of Schools. And Mr. Sandeep Chabra, principal of Indus International School, Pune. To take this session forward, I'd like to call upon my counterpart, Sahil Garud. Over to you, Sahil. Thank you, Anjali. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sahil Garud, and I am the head boy of Indus International School, Pune. It is an absolute honor for me to be a WSIS student ambassador. I would now like to introduce the moderator for this panel discussion. He is an alumnus of IIM Lucknow. Sir is a TEDx speaker, distinguished district director of Toastmasters International, co-founder of the Sumhadu Trust, and a visionary with a mission of impacting 1 million children through his work in the educational sector. Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome CEO of the Jain Group of Schools, Dr. Chandrasekhar. Thank you. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Uh, first you. of all, uh, I, would, I want to congratulate Dr. Uh, Sandeep and also special congratulations are due for Master Aditya. Uh, it's a great uh, feeling to actually congratulate a student, a, a, a young innovator, and especially as an educator, it's a great warm feeling when you see that an event is weaved around a student's innovation. Today, Master Aditya is the center of all of us convening for this particular summit. So I say this with great appreciation that this is just the beginning. And as my learned colleagues and some of the stalwarts of education have already said since morning, that this is setting the ball rolling for enormous amount of innovations to come forward. So may this be the beginning and a better day you cannot find than the 2nd of October for flagging off such things. So congratulations, Aditya, one more time. And I'm sure my fellow panelists, very eminent speakers and also accomplished person, they will have a lot to share about innovation, their perspectives, and how students of today are already doing. We are here to provide them environment, but at the same time, you will hear these stories from different people who will be speaking about what they have experienced and they are experimenting at their own schools and institutions. So without much ado, let me take this opportunity, first of all, to welcome all the panelists. So I will start in no particular order, but uh, the order given to me in the email. So first, I have as my panelist, Mr. Rikrit Sarai, Managing Director, Satlaj Group of Schools. Can we hear it for Mr. Rikrit Sarai? Uh, Chandrasekhar sir, just an update. Uh, Mr. Rikrit Sarai is traveling to one of its schools in Chandigarh. So that's in a village area and is facing some internet problem. So he's keep right. on trying. So whenever he's try uh, getting the get him back he's trying to That's all right. Point. So we'll move, move forward. And uh, next on the panel is uh, a very good friend, Dr. S.K. Rathor, founder, chairman, and managing director, Sanford Group of Schools. I would uh, take a minute to briefly introduce him to all of you. Dr. S.K. Rathor, as I said before, a very good friend. We have got this op opportunity of uh, being on a few panels together, interacting at educational conferences, but all of them in the pre-COVID world. But now it's all online. Dr. Rathor, welcome. He is the founder, chairman, and managing director of uh, Sanford Group of Schools. 
is a well known name in the field of school education and is a regular speaker at major conferences as i said he's got an mphil and phd in physics and an mba in marketing and uh, what i know of dr rathor is an innovator let me give you this example about him and i think that will set the context for his presence on this panel when the covid pandemic hit the education sector i remember very vaguely it was in the month of april when we were convening on a panel to understand the future of schools and i to get adjusted or acclimatized to the new normal and i very vividly remember dr rathor coming forward on a panel and saying that look at the opportunity which this environment has provided because he quoted an example said there are teachers who are incapable or who thought they were incapable of even creating an email id and today they are having a google classroom so that itself has given the opportunity to all the teachers to innovate the pandemic so i want to introduce him with that perspective that he is a person not just a leader in the education space but also a person who is interested in solutions bala sir rightly said that there are people who look at 10 solutions from one problem or the other way so he is one person who is interested in solution dr rathor thank you and welcome on the panel uh thank you so much uh, chandrasekhar for uh, such a nice introduction and uh, now we are meeting on uh, you know screens only so yes. first of all i would like to uh, congratulate mr sandeep and aditya i met sandeep and aditya a few times in uh, conferences only and uh, thank you so much uh, chandan and uh, the team asma for inviting me on uh, this panel so uh, as uh, we are talking about uh, i would like to say one more thing before starting my talk uh, i have seen first panel where st students are moderating basically so students are there to uh, take up the uh, this uh, webinar basically so this is uh, again an innovation in the seminars and webinars so uh, uh, this will help to boost the confidence of the children and make them leader at this early stage so thank you so much asma for giving this opportunity to the students so uh, if we talk about innovation innovation can be started at the age of 2 3 years itself as we started our educational journey uh, we are into this profession for more than 20 years now so we started with a small preschool and i could see many of the children of preschool is even to come out with many new things what we have not even uh, you know thought about so uh, the only thing is we need to extend we need to give the opportunity to the children to think independently and to do independently basically and in most of the families in most of the indian household <clears throat> we we impose our own thoughts as a parent we impose our own thoughts on the children we can produce n number of adityas we can produce n number of innovators if the parents like sandeep are there because if if any any father or mother find any uh, uh, talent in their children they should uh, give the opportunity to explore their thoughts basically so uh, if i uh, as uh, mr chandrasekhar said when the pandemic started and all the schools were all of sudden asked to close down and no way was there to extend the education to the children and specifically in the uh, pre school sector and budget school sector basically there was a big 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 challenge for the pre schools all across pre school whether it is uh, mr chandrasekhar's school or my school or any other school because these school pre schools are not so no so uh, technology equipped basically they were not ready they were not technology ready to deliver the virtual education and at the same time all the uh, budget schools k12 schools were in the fix how to deliver the education but as uh, chandrasekhar sahab said uh, we we take up this challenge and we uh, i talk to many of the uh, counterparts in the country different pre school owners and we come out with a solution and we trained uh, teachers across the country we organized lots of lots of 
webinars for the teachers because teachers doesn't know what is webinar they doesn't know how to conduct a virtual class and they were fearful uh, now the parents would be would be sitting on the other side of the screen they can find out the mistake in their delivery so i tell you uh, the two year child and the 20 year or 30 years teacher old teacher both are innovators they innovated themselves and they delivered the things what was required and now the teachers of all the pre school now the teachers of most of the budget schools are ready what they were supposed to deliver after 5 years from today so this was the positive side what the uh, innovation has given and i tell you uh believe on your child i i, I always whenever whenever i interact with the parents i just uh, ask them to believe on the child believe on the teachers and ask them to explore new things you never know what the any child can innovate so i i would like to uh, encourage all the children sitting on the panel and uh, who are listening uh, this uh, or watching this uh, webinar innovate new things world is yours and don't go for the advertisement what you are seeing on the facebook and this and that ki 5 saal ka bachcha ye kar sakta hai 7 saal ka bachcha you you believe in yourself you find out your talent you explore your thoughts and take the help of from your teachers and the parents and your friend and create new things from your side and it will happen definitely it will happen thank you thank you dr rathor on that positive note of encouragement let's move on to the next uh, panelists on our uh, panel discussion today we have uh, ms aditi viradia the managing director of uh, bilimoria high school so aditi your take on innovation and uh, here's a brief profile about uh, ms aditi she is a managing director as i said at bilimoria high school panchgani alumnus of the bilimoria high school and was a youth athlete specializing in track and field as well as basketball so here you have a uh, educator who takes pride in her uh, sports who takes uh, pride in uh, physical activities and as the saying goes uh, jack of all trade uh, master of none no all work and no play makes jack a dull boy so that's how uh, we have a panel with uh, different people who can bring in different perspectives So Aditi, you can tell us about your views on innovation and what you believe is the secret sauce to encourage students to become innovators. Over to you. Thank you, um, Dr. Chandra Shekhar um, and Dr. Rathod. It was so good to hear from you after a while because, like you said, we only meet on the screen now. Aditya so good to see you again it's been a while uh, i got to meet aditya at a, a summit a while ago and dr pach pande thank you so much for putting this together uh, chandan thank you for bringing me on board um what's most exciting about this one out of all the webinars that i have been a part of or seen is the kids so i i see so many young names and faces here and if you could just turn on your camera for a minute so we can see you because you guys are the ones shining you know um it's your day it's your time so so good to see you guys and and so impressed and so proud uh, aditya good job putting it together for kids um cuz i agree sometimes the these talks can get boring and long um so at least there's relevance today and having said that let's talk about innovation and curiosity so i think that's where it starts right curiosity as dr rathod says it starts very young humans are innately curious uh it starts from peekaboo when we play you know as babies and uh, spilling that cup of water to see what will happen to messing up the utensils in the kitchen or uh, spilling the atta and um, you know because it's trial and error we're testing we're seeing what happens we're playing in the mud climbing a tree what's up there curiosity begins there so when does it stop or when does it get controlled it's the parents so right now first i would like to talk to the parents whoever is in the room uh, including uh, our panelists including myself a mother of two um we've got to stop controlling it we've got to stop stopping our children we have to stop 
uh, ourselves from curbing that curiosity. So instead of telling a child, don't spill the water, you're dirtying the floor, maybe a chat about why are you spilling the water? Is there something interesting you're observing here? Because the child has no interest in what happens to the water on the floor. They just want to see what happens. So we have to understand as adults that every time our child asks a crazy question or wants to do something impossible or comes up with this out of the world idea that just seems so unrealistic, there is curiosity involved. There is a need to explore involved. There is a need to bring change to the world involved. Irrespective of the age of the child, whether they are a year old or whether they are 16, like some of you are, right? So every time you're testing the waters, whether it is pushing the uh, sleeping time limit or, you know, it's time to go to bed. No, I still want to be on the internet looking for something or whether it is seeing how many friends you can bring into your online game or whether it is uh, trying to test with coding. It's all curiosity based and that is where the explorations begin and that is the basics of innovation. You're going to start building new things by exploring first. So parents, you've got to let the children be. We really have to let them explore. Their reality is not ours. Reality uh, for our children will be what they build, what they create. Because as we so popularly say in so many of these webinars or seminars that our children are pre preparing themselves for a world that is yet to come into existence preparing for careers that don't even exist in, uh, yet. And that is through their own explorations and innovations, through their own building, like, um, you know, Aditya has built his own company now. Uh, and I think that parenting is a very big uh, role to play. And Dr. Pachpande, good job doing that, you know, letting him explore, encouraging him to, empowering him to. And that is what all of us parents need to do. It's very easy to see an ad for a coding class or sign up for the best art class or, um, you know, sign up for the best STEM program or bring in a tinkering lab and bring in the computers. But if you don't let them use that laptop, what is the point? If you don't let them explore on it, then, you know, all of the world's best facilities are not going to bring growth. So as adults, we need to start letting them explore, uh, trust them and trust your parenting, trust our adult influence as teachers, as mentors, that they will not cross the boundaries. Now, let's go to the kids. So what is it that the kids play a role in, right? So y'all are curious, you want to innovate, you want to explore, you want to learn new things. Maybe it's not the right things. Uh, maybe it is the right thing. So maybe it's something nobody's heard of. But how do you do it to ensure that whatever you're doing is good for yourself, your surroundings and the world at large? And I think a lot of it is embedded in empathy. You know, so if as an innovator, you think there are a lot of people suffering out there because of COVID and I think we should build like, you know, this easy to use box to sanitize stuff. Somewhere there is empathy involved that you're understanding the pain of others. And that's why you want to bring the change. Right. And where does the empathy begin? Well, the empathy begins with self because there is so much competition out there for you guys. The pain you are going through is the pain another child is going through, maybe in a different way. The curiosity you have, another child has as well. So what is the point of competing? But if you got together to do it, to talk about it, to grow together, it would just be so much better, right? So empathy starts with self first. If you don't ace your classes sometimes, it's okay. There is something to be learned from failure. If you don't get your app approved by the app store, it's okay. Go back to the board, make the changes required. That's how you will learn. If you aren't the rock star of your school right now, it doesn't matter. You will be a rock star in life at some point. So love yourself first. And that love will then transfer to the rest of the world because the empathy will then go for everyone else. If you have a lot of bitterness, you're, you're going to have bitterness for others. So then the innovation and the curiosity is curved over there as well because we're spending too much energy on the negative. So if you want to look at the world positively, empathy has to be there. Any innovation can only be fruitful if it is based on kindness and if it is for the greater good of the world. Anything we build, if it's not going to help the world, it's probably not a good idea. So 
how do you know you're going to help the world? Empathy is required. So as Mahatma Gandhi, you know, since we're talking about Mahatma Gandhi quotes, I found another one that I really liked. Freedom is not worth having if it does not include the freedom to make mistakes. So if you're going to be innovators, go make a lot of mistakes. Okay, go try a lot of different things. Ask your parents to enable you, empower you, trust you, and then go fall a few times. Go screw up a few times. Because it's from each mistake that you will learn and you will grow. So uh, since Dr. Chandrasekhar said we should talk about some of our experiences in the schools, I will not talk about specifics because I believe with children every day is something new, a new curiosity, a new inquiry, a new innovation. Um, but at VHS, what we are trying to do at Bill Murray High School, which by the way, it's 112 years old. So we've come from like a lot of old perspectives and a lot of military style to uh, freedom, you know, so uh, very much like the country, right? So um, over here, we're trying to give our children, um, what we do is we do thought triggers. We do a lot of question-based learning in the classroom where the teacher asks something and then the children have to just figure it out, explore, come back, teach each other. And uh, criticism is a good thing. Um, building on top of the criticism is growth mindset. Um, so that is kind of the approach that we're looking at. And I see a lot of schools across the country have started to begin that. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, Indus Inter International is a pioneer, Sanford is a pioneer in primary education. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of good things coming. So we need our kids to also hang in there because you're 20 steps ahead of us. We're trying to catch up. Um, and in the meantime, talk to your parents. You know, talking is, is also going to help. You guys have to align if you want the growth mindset at home. So that is me and my perspective on how we can bring innovation to our youth. Thank you, Dr. Chandrasekhar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Aditi. So empathy, empathy becomes uh, very central to the whole focus. But the other important factor which you sort of highlighted, which I would like to reiterate to all of you is we have all heard of this that when you want to get at something you'll have to try and in that pursuit of trials you will sometimes succeed and sometimes fail but the common jingo in the innovation world is fail fast and fail first yes. so the more you fail the better it is because you are figuring out how it does not work earlier a speaker gave reference to edison and when you look at Edison's journey, all of us know the story that he took more than 900 attempts to actually come and discover or come to the point of the electric bulb. But this perspective, when a reporter, the reporter went to him and said, so how do you feel to succeed after so many failures? And then Edison replied saying, I was not failing. I was enjoying the journey till I arrived here. So even that particular experiment was for me the experiment of my lifetime till I got the result. It's not about, okay, I need to check my box saying 999 times I'll fail and the success is there at the 1000th milestone. It's not that. So every time you embark on a journey, look at it from that perspective that that is your journey of a lifetime. And I think that is when you will be able to go nearer to an invention. I'm sure Aditya will agree when he came up with the box, the box never happened overnight. It took its time. But we will come to Aditya in a while. Let's go to the person, the person who has actually created the environment in addition with his home, that is Dr. Sandeep and family. But then there is a proud educator, I will say, a proud principal sitting here on our panel. That is Mr. Sandeep, uh, Mr. Sandeep Chabra. So Mr. Sandeep, I would like to pick a little bit from you in terms of how this entire journey began at, at what point in time you kind of understood that this is the boy who is going to make something matter. Now, before I give you the mic, I would like to briefly introduce you to the audience here. A lot of people are watching. So Mr. Sandeep Chabra, Principal Indus International School, an alumnus of uh, Winberg Allen School, Missouri, and a postgraduate in chemistry. Mr. Chabra has over 30 years of experience in education and have worked very closely with four major school curriculums systems in India, IB, 
Cambridge assessment, CBSE, and the ICSE. He believes in teaching learners to do things differently. And we have already got a sample of it in uh, Master Aditya and training them to be capable of doing anything they put their minds to. He also believes that creativity, critical thinking and innovation empowers learners to develop the skills they need in order to meet the requirements of a volatile, complex and ambiguous world, the VUCA world as we know it. So Mr. Sandeep, let's hear it from you. So uh, very good afternoon to everyone present here. Um, you know, I'm delighted and uh, also, you know, very grateful that you've invited me today uh, to speak at uh, a, a very, very special occasion. Uh, but let me begin by extending my greetings to everyone present here on Gandhi Jayanti. And, you know, a big, big congratulations to Aditya and uh, Dr. Sandeep uh, for this uh, absolutely fabulous uh, you know, day and, you know, a day where they are presenting to the world something that is uh, so required. Uh, you know, and, and you know, I'm, it's also great pride that, you know, Aditya is like a role model to us. And I'm also happy to see Anjali and Sahil uh, present here today. So thank you for being here. You know, uh, the pace of change in world uh, was happening at, at tremendous speed. And you know, to keep, keep pace with this fast changing world, everyone had to be at the best in innovating. But I feel that with COVID-19, uh, which is probably the greatest disruptor any one of us will ever go through, uh, the requirement of being innovative is now, is now a necessity. Why I say that is that if you look at um, anything in the world today, any business, any organization, you look at a restaurant, an airline, you look at a resort, you look at a hotel, you look at a, a guy who's selling tea on the roadside. He or she is not going to be able to do things as we were doing in January 2020. They've got to do it differently. They've got to do different things to survive. And when young people are going to go out into this world, they will be required to provide solutions to not only problems, but to provide solutions in order to create a new normal world. And in my opinion, it's going to take at least a few decades till the world finds its new normal. And these few decades is going to be, are going to be decades of innovation, are going to be decades of of trials and you know like somebody said of failing and learning again and finding solutions so i think it's very important that schools today because that's where it all begins start to understand that they are going to play a very very important role you know in order for us to make children future ready we've got to get them now to start thinking not only out of the box but in my opinion, thinking where there is no box at all. But also equally important is to get them thinking outside the building. And what Aditya has done is a great example of thinking outside the building. When I talk about outside the building, when we talk about innovation, they must impact society. It must impact people outside, all right? It must impact communities. And therefore what you know, Aditya has now shown to all of us is that he's, he's innovated into something, uh, has innovated something that is going to uh, play a great role in impacting the society outside. So when we talk and think about innovation, we must always keep in mind what will its impact be, not only to the organization, but also to the community. I think that's really, really important. The other thing that this dis great disruptor has done is that, you know, it's kind of moved us into the 22nd century much quicker. All right, you know, people said it's going to take another 80 years for the 22nd century to come. But I think because of this COVID-19, the 22nd century is going to come in terms of requirements of young people, maybe in the next five, seven, 10 years, or maybe it's already here. 
And the skills that people will require in the 22nd century are slightly different to what we talk about today as the seas of creativity, collaboration, communication, critical thinking. They're going to be more about connect. They're going to be more about community. It's going to be more about culture. And it's, 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 it's going to be, it's going to, be, and therefore it's very important that schools keep all this in mind when they start getting children future ready. And you know, uh, I can, I'm going to share a few examples of what we've started doing. All right. Uh, so that, you know, it may, it may kind of, you know, help people think uh, similarly. I think there are a few things that schools need to do. Number one is that we've got to liberate education. Okay, from its straight jacketed uh, old style, we've got to liberate it. All right. Now, in order to liberate it, you know, we've got to allow young people, even grade ones and twos, to undergo various experiences, get various insights into things which are not only academic. Of course, they've got to do academics. All right. Every child has to go through, for example, in our school, the primary years program, the middle years program, and the diploma program. They've all got to study that. I mean, that's, that's like, you know, uh, you know, Dr. Bala said that, you know, that's the takeoff point. Okay, so you've got to have your basic education in place. So what we've done, and you know, it's also helped teachers unlock their potential, because only then they will be able to unlock children's potential. And, you know, we all knew that we're going to be online mode for at least, you know, a few months. So every school, every teacher in my school has designed a short course, which lasts eight hours. So it's eight one hour modules on topics which are close to their heart, but non-academic. All right. So it could be tea culture in Japan. All right. As varied as that, every single teacher has designed a course and they've enjoyed doing it. It's also helped them discover their own selves. But what's also done is that allow our school students an opportunity to experience over a hundred varied short courses. Now this allows them to get insights into different things. Only when they start building range of thinking, will they start, you know, figuring out what their purpose is. And I think, you know, having purpose in life is very, very important to start on your journey of being innovative. So that's the first thing we did. The second thing we did, and you know, uh, Dr. Sandeep spoke about it, that this year we've launched a startup school. And you know, the startup school is of course a school which has, it's a twinning program with your normal academic program, where every child will do, where well, not every child, with children who get selected, they have to apply for it. And we have 42 students this year who are part of the startup school. They have to spend four hours trying to hone entrepreneurial skills. And in the startup school, it's not the school teachers who are teaching. They are parents from Indus who are themselves entrepreneurs, running big organizations, have done a lot of startups. They are going to be the faculty in the startup school. So it's not only going to be the mentoring there, but of course, you know, there are a lot of other things that we've attached, including you know, going through a value and action program, through, you know, design thinking, through deep reading, you know, through talks <clears throat> and so on and so forth. So, so a whole curriculum has been built and every child, every child who's part of the startup school, sorry, will spend four hours a week so that at the end of two years, he or she has now built the ability or the capacity to start something new. And even if they don't want to start a new business, wherever they go to work, they have a mindset where they will be able to find solutions to problems. So that's the second thing we've done. The third thing I think, which is very, very important is that schools now need to start integrating technology, especially artificial intelligence with your school program. And, you know, I'm happy to share we are, we are probably the first school in the world that's built its own robots. All right. And it's, it's, they've already started the experimentation phase is over and we built them from scratch. We didn't kind of get them from overseas or something. We built our own robots who are going to be assistants to teachers in the classroom. And they're all going to be on artificial intelligence. All right. And you can go to 
history channel and youtube and there's enough available on the indus robots and uh, next year you know once the pandemic is op over we are hoping that each of our school campus will have five teacher robots who can concentrate on teaching content and you know there's no nothing better than a machine teaching content so that teachers can then start doing what is really important to build that culture of innovation which is mentorship which is you know creating problems for people to solve but most importantly they can get onto this journey where they not only teach subjects and take the assistance of robots in teaching subjects but start teaching the child i think the day schools start very very strongly teaching the child okay which is about not only physics and chemistry and math they will start creating an environment which is got freedom for people to start thinking start generating ideas and you know be able to become innovative and entrepreneurial in 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 their thinking i think entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial thought process is now the new leadership um you know quality so every leader now will have to have that mindset okay whether every entrepreneur is a leader or not but every leader will have to be an entrepreneur and i think schools now need to think very 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 deeply about you know the kind of change that they will need to bring to bring about this environment in school which will produce a lot more of adityas okay uh, because they are the ones who are going to change bring the required change in the new world till it's fine till it finds its feet and according to me it's going to take a few decades for that to happen i hope you know i've been able to answer what you wanted me to say yeah thank you thank you thank you mr sandeep so before we go to the last segment of this panel i would like to share a few things what i believe as the importance of innovation is from the beginning we have been hearing about the importance of how innovative culture ecosystem needs to be created and also experts and uh, panelists have shared about uh, their perspectives on how to make innovation happen i want to start off really from the point of view of uh, gandhi ji's quote which is very pertinent today is he started and he said this go to the people live with them love them start with what they know and build on from what they have i think this quote sums up the context in which i would like to speak on innovation and i am coming here from the perspective of a teacher i am coming here from the perspective of an educator now yes children have to fail fast and they have to fail first they have to be open they cannot uh, procrastinate their dreams we have heard all of this and i know some of the children are listening here and also some of them are viewing it on social media i am coming here as a teacher perspective of an educator and what i am trying to drive home here is children please listen to this carefully your teachers are number one innovators in the classroom right they may not call it as innovation they call it as jugad they call <laughs> it as getting the point delivered right let me give you a simple example i'll take the simple recent example of pandemic and i don't know which teacher it was they did not belong to my school but i got this on the social media and i'm taking the liberty to share it all of us were at one point in time wondering what do we do with places where teachers don't have access to technology when it comes to internet connectivity when it comes to electricity now these are problems which are not in our control these are bigger problems for any school to handle then we thought okay let's do this let's provide them with white board let's provide them with something in their homes where they can write and show it or they can record the lectures in their mobile phones and then send it across to you now the question was this was the lockdown time how do you procure a white board and deliver it to the house right even though you may have the money you know one example i want to quote here is one teacher uh, some school picked up a transparent sheet a document protector okay and she just put an a4 sheet a plain a4 sheet inside the document protector and she took a white board marker or even the kajal you know which they used to uh, for that and then she started writing on that 
and what she started doing was the white page within the document protector doubled up as a white board and she took a wet cloth wiped that particular plastic and turned it around and then she started writing now if you look at this this is also innovation to me what i'm trying to convey here is innovation is happening across in fact one person very nicely said we always want to ask question questioning is the key to innovation but what is key to questioning is observation please start observing please start observing things around and i'm sure you will get questions some questions may be very obvious it's okay but that's the starting point but then you start going up what we call as higher order thinking skills where you start taking it further and then you say why not this why not this first you start with why this and then you move to the next level where you say why not this and that for me is the starting point of innovation i mean we all know the famous story from history where the human body was never designed to run a mile less than 4 minutes but today we know what it is so it's all about asking why not this so this is my two cents to all of you innovations are around and teachers and parents everyone are innovating i mean i can give you n number of examples but these two examples will give you the the message of what innovation really is so look at it from that perspective now i'll do a quick round with all the panelists here where they will deliver couple of takeaways and one line message to all of you which you can crystallize from today's learning so back to uh, dr rathor and then mr aditi and finally to mr sandeep yes so uh, i just like to say take every challenge every every uh, bad situation as a, as a uh, you know opportunity and uh, i i just want to give you one example what we did because this is the worst period for young children children of the age of 2 3 years 4 years they are not uh, allowed to come out and parents are afraid to take them out so uh, what we did uh, the education is must for these people everybody uh, for everybody education is must the children like uh, sahil can understand the virtual classes but the children of 2 years of age and 3 years of age cannot understand and they even cannot sit in front of the screen for half an hour or so so what we did we uh, <clears throat> we uh, trained our teacher we asked the parent take take their consent and uh, create a uh, you know micro schooling concept and uh, ask our teacher to go to any parents house or Uh, ask the children uh, parents to send the two three four children to teachers house in the near from the nearby vicinity and it uh, it become a uh, innovation kind of model and now today i am proud to say we have more than 2000 children enrolled in our micro schooling project so this is the uh, kind of situation what we faced and we this is the innovation what we took out from this situation so every situation will give you a new innovation thank you doctor uh, aditi thank you dr chandrashekhar it was so lovely to hear from mr chabra and uh, uh, yourself as well because uh, some of the points you made are very valid uh, so my uh, bottom line view to all, all of the kids and the parents and other adults in the room would be um, don't be afraid to ask questions take those questions further as dr chandrashekhar said it's not just about one question it's about going and exploring don't be afraid to explore be fearless and most importantly do not be afraid to fail and do not be afraid to ask for help so uh, nothing can be a one man army and uh, all of our innovations or explorations also may need assistance from different uh, avenues so don't ever be afraid to look for help ask for help and most importantly be kind to yourself as well as the world at large to the people around you uh because your kindness will drive your growth um and that's my take away from this thank you thank you so much mr sandeep uh sir i think you are on mute um you know my 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 
very strong belief is that every child is born potential and i think you know it's it's the collective environment we create and today's exam is the best example of that is the environment we create not only in school but at home and once you create the right kind of environment there is nothing that is not possible so let's 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 have faith in all our young people and you know just strive to give them you know the right kind of environment and we will see we will see amazing things that these young people will end up doing all right so so you know i'm i'm very very grateful for being here today and you know and it's, of course you know uh, um, it's immense joy and pride that you know one of my school student is today the the center of this entire uh, program all right so thank you for having me here yeah thank you so much well that brings me to this part where this was not as per the script but i will take the liberty to go about uh, the center of today's conversation master aditya i would like you to unmute yourself and tell us to your friends and also to teachers like us what is that one thing which you now that you have arrived at the suraksha box what is that you would like to tell your friends at this point and message about innovation to your friends your one key message aditya yeah am i audible yes yeah so uh, the one key message and i mean even um, uh, in this um, uh, from the start of the day we have all been talking about innovation and um, teaching innovation that that one thing i would like to suggest to everyone would be to um you know whenever you're starting something or doing anything never start in your mind by saying uh, that you know or, or like it's too far or it's um or uh, you know never start with a negative mindset so the three ways to achieve or master anything are to have the right mindset to get the right motivation and to have the right methods to execute those dreams of students you know dreaming is very important and executing that is even better yeah because ideas are cheap execution is everything and today's generation is all about the executional mindset um so uh, never ever quit i mean uh, people uh, like many successful people didn't become successful just um overnight right they they had to go through so many uh struggles um so much uh, it's a journey right it's not about the destination it's about the journey so yeah never quit uh, never uh, start with a negative mindset and always uh, ask the importance of why always question yourself because again as we saw questioning is very important uh, for driving innovation and curiosity so always uh, question why always question uh, and again passion drives motivation uh, and um, you need the right motivation the methods and uh, and the mindset to master anything and with that uh, any uh, every child is born to is born to blossom and to change the world thank you thank you so much aditya well said and uh, before we conclude we would like uh, to once again reiterate the fact that uh, we do pledge our support and uh, we join this innovation movement of uh, next uh, gen innovate and the mission of donating 15.1 k suraksha kits to needy families and schools so this is indeed a great great honor for all of us and uh, i want to say that personally as a person who is participating in this panel i would like to pledge my allegiance to this particular cause and i will wait for all my panelists to also to voice that allegiance to all of you and then we can actually go for a pledge collectively and then hand over the control back to anjali so i will read the pledge and maybe you can all kind of uh, repeat it we are all of course school teachers so we know how to take the pledge <laughs> yeah so the pledge is uh, as follows i chandrashekar dp 
I Sandeep. I Ad yeah. I Aditi Goradia. I S K Rathor. Hereby pledge to join. Hereby pledge to join. Hereby pledge, Hereby pledge to, join. to join. The innovation movement. The innovation movement. Of next gen innovate. Of next gen innovate. Of next gen innovate. And the mission of donating fifteen point one k. And the mission, and the mission of, of donating fifteen point one k. Suraksha kits to needy families and schools. Suraksha kits, kits to needy, needy families, families and, schools. and schools. Thank you so much. So there you go, Aditya and Dr. Sandeep. We all have pledged, and I'm sure the viewers and listeners also will do that. With this, thank you once again, panelists, and back to Anjali. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Sandeep. Thank you, Aditya. And you know, good job, Anjali and Sahil. Thank you. Please carry. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Um, is Dr. Saha here with us? Uh, no, no. Uh, Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we we just have the vote of thanks. Yeah. All right. So, honorable dignitaries, student moderators, and our most valued guests, I am Aruhi, head girl of Jain Heritage Academy School, Gondapur, Hyderabad, and it's my pleasure to be, have been asked to be a part of this World Innovation Student Summit. The speakers today have inspired many students to bring out innovative ideas to the world, like Master Aditya Panchpande. He believes that dreaming and executing dreams is a very important thing. And also, the three M's are very important in our lives, which are motivation, methods, and mindsets. Next, I would like to mention a deep sense of appreciation for Dr. Biswajit Saha, who is the keynote speaker of today, Director of Training and Skill Education of CBSE. We are also grateful to uh, the eminent speakers, Mr. Rakrit Seral, who wasn't here today with us for a good cause, and the Satlaj Group of Schools. I wish to express gratitude to Dr. S.K. Rathod, Founder, Chairman, and MD, Stanford Group of Schools, uh, for sharing his ideas on how to believe in ourselves and uh, how to take all the good opportunities that cross our path. Further, we are grateful to Ms. Aditi Gorandia, Managing Director at Bilinoria High School. She taught us today that empathy is very valuable in our lives and how we should never give up and we should be very fearless. So thank you, ma'am. Next, we would like to uh, express sincere thanks to Mr. Sandeep Chhabra, Principal Indus International School, for giving us excellent coverage on important topics like uh, thinking outside the box uh, and bringing new education, and also um, for believing that every child has potential. Thank you, sir. And lastly, we would like to acknowledge gratitude to Mr. Chandrasekhar DP, the moderator of today, CEO of uh, Jain Group of Schools. So you have always uh, inspired the students of our schools. And thank you for attending this session and uh, persuading students to bring forth innovative ideas. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I once again want to state that we are all most grateful to all the speakers on this platform. It's been a great pleasure. 